Thank you everybody for joining us. My name is Dan O'Brien and with me is my colleague Lily Andrulis. This is the study abroad in the South Pacific information session. We're going to be starting here in just another minute. I'm going to give one more minute, let the uh, attendees come into the room. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dan O'Brien, Regional Director with the Education Abroad Network. And with me today is Lily Andrewis. Uh, we are presenting on study abroad in the South Pacific, and we thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, Lily, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Lily, as Dan said. Um, I'm an Associate Regional Director for uh, the Education Abroad Network. I work with Dan in his region that spans New York to Florida, and then I also work in the Midwest and South a little bit as well. Um, excited to be here and chat about your options um, in the South Pacific. Okay, so we're going to start the presentation. Um, we got a few slides to get started, and then uh, we're going to transition into a quick video. So when the time comes, you'll want to um, have your finger near your uh, volume button. It could start really loud, um, but, you know, we'll remind you when we get there. So thank you again for joining us um, today. Um, this is the Education Abroad uh, Network presentation for studying abroad in the South Pacific. We've been around for, um, well, over 25 years now. Um, we've got our, our um, offices based in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we have a corporate office uh, based in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. But uh, Lily and the uh, rest of the team are based out in Chicago. Um, the Education Abroad Network has its roots in Australia and New Zealand. Um, that's all we've been doing for our 25 plus years. We had a uh, natural expansion into Asia as several of our uh, South Pacific partners um, started developing what they refer to as offshore campuses. Um, it really just meant a branch campus and another international destination. So that was a, a natural springboard for us. And um, over that time now we have um, you know, a couple of handful of um, countries where we're sending students. This presentation, of course, today will be based on Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we've served over 15,000 students uh, throughout our uh, history. And um, as you'll see uh, today, uh, we do semester, summer, internship uh, programs, um, a whole range of options really uh, for students. If you would like to follow along on the website, it's teenabroad.org, that's teenabroad.org. And we've got some great social sites, um, we've got a wonderful teen blog that you can read is right on our website. And of course, um, Instagram and Twitter where they have some really great um, uh, photos and stories. So here we're gonna get started with the video. Sorry about that. Sometimes it starts right away. So like Dan said, if your volume is really high right now, maybe just lower it a little bit because if you just heard, the video can be a bit loud. So just beware. Um, here we go. Studying marine biology along the Great Barrier Reef. Diving deep into the colorful culture of Northern Thailand. Trekking through New Zealand's stunning natural beauty practicing your Mandarin while eating dim sum in Shanghai. There is nothing like living, learning, and excelling in another culture. The people you meet, the knowledge you gain, the adventures you remember the rest of your life. It may seem like a dream, but studying abroad is easier than you think with the Education Abroad Network, or TEAM. With more than 20 years of welcoming students to Asia Pacific and dedicated on the ground staff, we're experts at what we do and have strong partnerships with more than 30 leading universities throughout the region. 
We support students from start to finish on their study abroad journey based on our personal experiences and extensive local contacts in each country. With Teen, while you're away from home, you're never alone. We know where to find the coolest spots, best local activities, and tastiest food, and we'll point you in the right direction, complete with cultural excursions and service activities in every program. Whether you're seeking summer or semester-long study, professional internship, or even a full degree, there is a teen program suited to your schedule, studies, and lifestyle. Ready to get started? Visit our website at teenabroad.org. All right. I love when we show that video, Dan. I know you feel the same way. It just gives a good visual and like a great overview of who we are and really what we do. Dan, do you want to go ahead and touch on the slide or do you yeah, want to? Sure, sure. Um, as I uh, uh, previously mentioned, um, we have programming all throughout the South Pacific and um, Southeast Asia. Today's focus is on Australia and New Zealand, but I did want to present to you the larger portfolio of options so you can see the breadth and depth of uh, the institutions that we work with. This is um, a map of Australia, um, again, showing all the different program options we have. I've highlighted in red the um, University of Central Florida approved programs uh, for Australia for semester study abroad. So in partnership with TEEN, UCF students um, will spend a full semester at um, any one of these highlighted um, campuses here. These uh, institutions and the portfolio to study abroad in Australia was carefully selected by uh, UCF staff and administrators. Uh, many of these programs have been reviewed at a curriculum level, at a deep curriculum level, through the various departments at, um, at UCF. There really is an academic program for every student here in Australia, whether you study accounting uh, or zoology, uh, one of these institutions uh, will be right for you. Not all institutions, um, but certainly one or several of them uh, will be available. Very much like UCF, um, the majority of these institutions are multidisciplinary. Um, they are um, uh, full campuses um, with all of the amenities and expectations that students would have of a US campus and specifically of the University of Central Florida. What I mean by that is a student hub or a student, uh, um, uh, a student center is how they often refer to them here in the US uh, campus center. Um, there'll be gymnasiums, athletic facilities, um, student support services, um, societies and clubs, um, which would be like you know your student organizations um, healthcare centers or healthcare services on campus. Um, again, a whole range of the expected uh, services and amenities, and of course, the academics that we would be um, expecting here in this country. Um, towards the end of the presentation, and as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, um, you'll see the links to the website. It's teenabroad.org. And at that site, you'll be able to um, scroll down to Australia and click on one of the, the universities for a deep dive into what these campuses look like. But for now, we're going to move on and um, we're going to scroll over to the New Zealand programs. And as I said, uh, for Australia, the same model, the same thinking of how University of Central Florida came up with a portfolio was that they were looking for um, options that would satisfy all academic areas. Again, whether you're accounting, uh, zoology, or you're somewhere in the middle with um, health sciences or engineering or uh, mathematics, communications, um, you want to study environmental sciences, hospitality or tourism, business, information systems, um, there's a range of opportunities here for you. Um, and just like Australia, uh, these were meant to provide some uh, variety and choice for students. Some of these are um, more what I refer to as um, city campuses. So they're embedded or based within um, a larger city like um, Auckland, for example, or if we're referring to Australia, maybe um, in Sydney or along the Gold Coast. So again, meant to provide some 
uh, breadth and depth in terms of location, academic offerings. And just like um, here in the US, also in New Zealand, you'll have a range of student services, um, campus facilities, libraries, computer rooms, labs, et cetera. Um, great, great opportunities for all students of all majors, but very different countries. And some of that research that students will be doing um, on their own independently or working through the, the teen program manager or even um, there at Uni University of Central Florida at UCF Global, um, their advisors and staff will help you uh, do some independent research to find the program that's right for you. This is a study abroad experience, so we want to be thinking about academics first. But we also know that students go for a variety of other reasons. Maybe they're looking to add something to their um, uh, professional experience, and that could be through taking a specific course, or maybe they want to do an internship alongside a course. Some students go for a cultural experience. Others go for more of society and social uh, um, opportunities. But nevertheless, it is study abroad, so we want academics to be first of uh, top of mind, but also thinking about some of those other factors as you make a choice uh, into your study abroad option. Lily, would you like to talk about the orientations and excursions for both of the locations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have a very um, robust orientation program in both of our locations. So for Australia, you start your semester off the Great Barrier Reef and um, get a lot of really cool opportunities to explore that part of Australia. We know the Great Barrier Reef is a huge bucket list item for a lot of students. So it's a great way to kick off the semester. Um, we're also, this is usually where I like to chat a little bit about our Choose Earth initiative. It's one of our core values here at TEEN, and it's really centered around the, the idea that we want to make these um, experiences for students not only um, educational, but also socially and ecologically responsible. So you'll get to do um, an, a, a uh, nature walk with a local indigenous elder um, near the Great Barrier Reef, which is such a cool experience, and we work with a... Um, like uh, a local group of in indigenous Australians, Aboriginal Australians. So we're really intentional about who we're partnering with. And you'll see that across not only our orientations, but our excursions, cultural events. I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, students who opt for New Zealand will actually start their semester um, in Auckland, which is the largest city in New Zealand. Um, it is one of the coolest cities I've ever been to. It's just, there's a lot to do, there's a lot to see, and you'll have a Maori experience while you're there and get the opportunity to actually um, go to Hobbiton as well, which is such a cool experience, especially if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. Even if you're not, it's still really neat to be on a film set. Um, so those are basically how you're gonna start your semester. And then for any of our programs, we also have excursions that are um, optional, you can add on. So these three photos on our the screen right now, have like the three major excursions that we normally run. So the first one is the Melbourne Weekender, and it's usually an extended weekend in Melbourne run by our local staff in Melbourne um, to get you familiar with the city. Melbourne is very much akin to like the New York City of Australia. So there's a lot of art, a lot of culture, comedy scenes, cafe culture, um, you name it, and there's so much to do. And our team will tour you around the area they call home so you can get familiar with it as well. The middle photo is from our Thailand spring break excursion. So if your spring breaks, spring break dates line up with everybody else's, this will be available to you. And you can spend a week exploring Thailand, partially with our Australia staff, partially with our Thailand staff who have traveled there or lived there for quite some time or have traveled there repeatedly um, running this excursion. Um, we take you to a elephant nature park. So a sustainable way to interact with elephants as opposed to riding them. Um, you get to see some really cool beaches and learn more about Thai culture. I believe the students even do a cooking class, which is always pretty high ranked on um, activities once you get to a new country. And then the last one is a photo from our South Island excursion to New Zealand. Um, and that is another spring break trip that if your dates line up, it will be available to you. And you can spend a week hiking around the South Island. The South Island is really well known for its outdoorsy scene, the mountains and the, uh, the nature-based things you can do there. So this is a great intro to um, maybe you go to Australia, but you really want to see New Zealand as well. It's a good option. Or maybe you're just a big hiker and you're already in New Zealand and you want to do more. So there's options available to you. 
Van, did I miss anything on that one? No, great job. That's just a reminder that this is your very first week in the country. Um, you arrive into your orientation site where you will be with other students, um, not only from University of Central Florida, but maybe Washington State, New York State, South Carolina, uh, Alabama, Texas, um, could be any number of um, students and uh, representation from across the United States. So great job, Lily, I like that. Cool, then we can just go right into cultural events as well. So for every single program that we run, we have a cultural event pretty much every single month. And that might look like something like a coffee catch up with your resident director, just to you know touch base with them, tell them about any social academic needs you might have. Maybe you're feeling homesick or at least just get a nice hot drink and hang out with some other teen participants. Or they may look like what this photo is from, which is our Learn to Surf um, cultural event that we run for most students in Australia. Australia. Um, Learn to Surf is uh, run by an organization that helps employ refugees once they arrive in Australia. So again, a very socially responsible organization, which we love to see. Um, and it's a really great way to learn something that's so culturally Australian. Um, so that's available to almost all students going to Australia. Um, some other cultural events that we run in the past is um, an excursion in New Zealand to Zealandia, which is a nature preserve, um, a local rugby game or footy match. Um, so you get to experience the sports culture um, and they change, they can change from year to year, but they're usually pretty similar and they're always a really fun experience and they're included for all teen students. Um, so you don't have to worry about if there's an additional cost or anything like that. You already have these built in and it's a good way to embed yourself more in the local culture. Dan, anything to add on this one? Great job. Wonderful. Nothing to add. Do you want to touch on summer programs or should I dive in? Sure, keep going for it. All right. Um, so we do run a variety of different summer opportunities, and those really fit into three major categories, which on this slide I'll talk about too. So we have kind of uh, academic-based programs. So those are our programs um, primarily in Australia and Thailand that have an academic focus to them. So sport and exercise psychology in Australia or Australian wildlife and conservation or international politics of Southeast Asia or holistic health and wellness in Southeast Asia. So those are usually three-week programs. You're traveling with a cohort of students and you're focusing on that one class. So you'll usually receive anywhere from three to four credits for the one class that you're taking while you're abroad for that period of time. These are really good for students who need maybe um, a general education credit in one of those different um, fields. If you want to kind of see your major from a totally different perspective, maybe you are um, a public health major, so holistic health and wellness could be a really cool perspective change for you. Um, or if you're just interested in any of the topics, there's no reason not to do it. Um, and those are usually, like I said, three weeks. They're a little bit shorter term, so a lot more manageable for people who need to be at home for whatever reason, um, so a little bit more feasible. And they also usually travel a little bit, and those are built into the program as well, any kind of travel aspects. The other side of our summer programs look like our international uh, summer schools that are primarily based in Asia. So those are in Korea, Shanghai, uh, Singapore, Vietnam, um, I think that's all of them, if memory serves. Um, and those are really focused around kind of like a summer school, similar to what you would have here in the States, where there's a limited selection of courses, but a wider array than just one class that you would be taking. So maybe you need to knock out a science and a business elective or credit or whatever that looks like. And in these formats, you can take anywhere from one, I think it's up to three different classes. So it really just depends on what's going to work best for you. Most of these programs are four weeks up to six weeks if you need more credits um, and they are in uh, like our top city destination so you're going to be in major cities in Asia which is always fun to explore and kind of navigate around. Um, the last type of program is actually I think next on the slide is our internship program. So that is offered during the semester as well as the summer but we see more students interested in the summer format. Um, we also have study and intern combinations in some of our locations so that's something to keep in mind as well.
So just touching on summer internships a little bit more specifically, these are eight week programs that have either a May or June start and you are a full time employee so you're doing a minimum of 32 hours of work per week and you do receive credit at the end of the program if you would like to. Um, credit's usually included for all of these programs, it's just a matter of, you know, if the student wants it or not. Um, and they're really specialized. So our internship team, when you apply for an internship, we receive your application, we take a look at everything, and then our internship call team calls you and says, okay, this is awesome. It seems like you have a great application, but what do you want to do? What do you absolutely not want to do? What are your goals for this? And we find you an internship tailor-made to that mentality. So um, they're really specialized, kind of like I said, and we may be able to say something like, oh, if you're looking for this type of mm, maybe like a science space internship, that might be a better option in Australia versus Shanghai. So our uh, internship team can be really clear and flexible with you and you can let us know what like you will flex to and what you would not flex to. Dan, anything to add for internships? Well, I would say that um, in addition to what Lily mentioned, which is great information, is that um, the pricing for the internships is quite um, competitive. And by quite competitive, I mean very reasonable to be priced. Um, for an eight-week internship, um, inclusive of your credits and housing, um, the program fee was somewhere around $6,200 this past year. So there will be no programming in summer um, 2021 for internships for many of our destinations, um, but uh, we will have placements available in some of them. We are still working on pricing. We're working on health and safety details, which we'll address uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Um, but I would just look at pricing um, and what's included for all of the programs we discussed today. Um, UCF Global and uh, the uh, staff there are super knowledgeable. Um, when you go speak to them or you're looking at programming options through uh, on their website, um, they'll list all of the approved uh, program providers, uh, programs where students have a good history of, of attending those programs. But it, it, you do have to be um, very careful as to, you know, what's included on the program. Some programs include housing, others do not. Some have excursions, others do not. Some include internet, others do not. So um, we at TEEN, I feel like we do a really great job of um, being very clear about what's included and what's not included. So on a program like an internship, um, you expect to show up with your intern and, and have accommodation. So all that is included. Your meals are not provided uh, because we don't know your work uh, schedule. And oftentimes students, you know, will uh, meet up with their, with their um, working mates or new roommates and go out for a lunch or a breakfast or a dinner, et cetera. Um, but anyway, it's important to keep, to keep all that in mind. There will be some... Um, meetups or little cultural events throughout the internship summer program. So you'll have a couple of activities there. They may mirror what um, Lily was uh, discussing earlier, depending on your country and city of where you're interning. Um, but uh, it is a st it's still considered a full service program where you have um, all the amenities that, that we referred to. Speaking so, of inclusions. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of inclusions, right? So um, for all the different programs that we featured today and all the programs listed on our website, um, there is a, a programs fees and inclusion section. And um, as you can clearly see here on the screen, everything that Lily um, referred to earlier in terms of your tuition, the enrollment and departure to support. Uh, and what we, what we mean by that is from the time you apply to the time you depart, You'll have a program manager that you're assigned to. That person helps with um, everything from uh, flight assistance and giving some guidance around flights from student visas uh, that you may need to enter the country either for uh, work or study. Um, they'll, you'll be having your orientation as Lily described so eloquently before uh, at the start of the presentation. On-site resident uh, staff, which is a very important piece of who we are as an organization. Every program will have an in-country uh, representative 
um, that is working uh, for and with teen um, and therefore for you uh, once you're on the ground. Housing options, we have several housing options for the various programs. Obviously the cultural events and excursions we talked about, some of those are included, some are add-ons and some, um, well, all the programs have insurance um, and most of that insurance is mandatory. Um, and by mandatory, I mean, in order to get a student visa, you have to get the local um, government health care plan, um, either in Australia or New Zealand or some other destination. Um, so all of that is included plus more. And um, again, just please consider that as you're looking at not only teen, but all the other great programs that UCF uh, Global has to offer. A couple of other um, important details. I'd like Lily to address the scholarships if you if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, no problem. Um, so with teen scholarships, we have tried our best to make the process as easy as possible for students to apply. So for teen scholarships, you can apply for one of three divisions. Actually, you can apply for as many as you'd like. They fall into three different categories of diversity, need-based, and um, academically-based. Uh, merit-based is what it's called. Um, and so if you fit into all three of those categories, wonderful. If you fit into two, great. One, that's fine. Um, you're welcome to apply in whatever department works best for you. Um, so those scholarships, are, it's one application for those scholarships. Um, maybe you have to write in those three different areas if you pick all three, um, but it's still just one simple application. You can actually receive your scholarship award before you apply to the program. So that's really important for students who are on a budget. I know that would have made a huge difference for me when I went abroad. If I could know how much funding I was getting, it might have felt a little bit more reasonable for me. Um, and then if you apply before our full ride deadline, which traditionally year to year is, I believe, October 15th of every given year, um, then you're automatically considered for that full ride scholarship. Now that is one scholarship that we give out annually to any given student. And we highlight those students on our blog and we do little profiles on them. So we usually get a lot of students asking, what can I do to set myself apart for the full ride? How do I get the full ride? And I highly recommend that you look at those student profiles and see what those students are doing to really set themselves apart. In addition, any kind of university-based scholarship, so like we have a university-based scholarship with Bond University, um, you would be automatically be considered for those as well. The only scholarship that we have on our website where you would have to do an additional application is our photography scholarship, and that's just because we need a portfolio from every single student. And we've had students from DSLR, DSLR owners to iPhone users win that scholarship. So if you think, oh, I don't know if I'll get it, apply anyway, it can't hurt. And um, that's just a little extra funding for your semester abroad. One last thing I want to note is all of our scholarship awards, the traditional teen scholarships are a minimum of $1,000. So that's obviously already a huge chunk of money off of your program fees, whether that's for a summer or a semester or whatever it looks like. Um, I think that's everything, Dan, what did I miss? <laughs> I'll just mention that um, we do have automatic scholarships that are available for UCF participants um, to those highlighted programs that were featured in red earlier on in the presentation for both Australia and New Zealand. Um, our current relationship with um, UCF and UCF Global, um, the arrangement is such that um, students do get an automatic scholarship for uh, participation in one of those programs. As Lily um, mentioned, the minimum amount is uh, $1,000. There's um, uh, other um, pricing uh, available or other scholarship amounts available for other um, institutions. So you can leave today knowing that uh, you do have at least one automatic scholarship um, and then you'll be eligible for all the other scholarships that Lily mentioned um, today. Any scholarships like Bright Futures that you may have or any University of Central Florida scholarship, I would like to refer you back to UCF Global um, just because there are some um, particular details that may be um, required and we don't want to certainly misinform or mislead you 
uh, or possibly disappoint you by presenting some wrong information there. Um, I do know that uh, we've been working with UCF for many years and we've had many students who are on some sort of scholarships, federal financial aid. And from there, we've been able to work with um, the financial aid office and allowing students to um, maybe set up a payment plan or perhaps we um, defer payment until your scholarship uh, financial aid monies are released. So um, we, we don't want that to be uh, an initial barrier for you. So I would like to redirect you back to um, uh, UCF Global for that specific question about um, bright futures. I think that wraps it up for uh, the presentation. Um, that covers kind of all of our topics. It does. There's a couple of questions that we heard come uh, that we have. Um, if you want to flip to the next screen, though, Lily, there's. I just want to present the contact information. Um, okay. So, I don't think it's on this one, but I can pop it in the oh, chat. No problem. Yeah, it's okay. I just wanted people to have um, University of uh, Central Florida Study Abroad Office email. And that is, um, or the website rather, I'm sorry, that's studyabroad.ucf.edu. That's studyabroad.ucf.edu. And Lily has put that into the chat feature. So we have some questions coming in. Um, does Bright Futures go to this? And I, I um, responded to that earlier. Um, opportunity about study abroad and intern in Australia with teen. Yes, that is an option. Um, that's the hybrid. Um, it's called the hybrid study abroad. We call it study abroad internship combination program. There's a couple of different terms there. Um, we have some sessions upcoming this week where we're going to be just discussing one of those, which is done through the International College of Management in Sydney. Um, that is one program where you would be taking courses in hospitality or in management, um, tourism, and then you do an internship alongside that. There's other programs um, that are sort of uh, thematic, so like a sports, kinesiology, exercise science hybrid type program. Again, you're taking courses alongside, um, uh, along alongside an internship. Um, and Lily, are there a couple of others that you can think of? Yeah, for sure. So there are some campuses in Australia and New Zealand both that have an internship component built in. Sometimes there's restrictions based on what your major is, so you may want to look into that. I also, and I'm just going to say this because I say this to everybody considering an internship, make sure that you want to put in the time to it. That was something I did when I went abroad and I thought it was super valuable, but I had friends who did it as well and they just did not find value in it. So make sure that you think about that for a little while, but then we can find you a program that would do an internship in your major um, that shouldn't be a problem at all that would also have courses related to what you are working on um, that's a really common question so yes there are a lot of options thank you Lily um, any more questions please feel free to uh, either unmute yourself or you can drop something into the uh, chat feature there um, I want to thank you all for being here um, I did want to mention a couple of other things around health and safety while people are still here is um, health and safety is top priority for teen and, and all of our staff, um, all of the staff who we have overseas um, that would be looking af after you while you're there. Um, on our website, um, right on the, the landing page, right on the top um, section, there's a, 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 um, a little highlighted area called COVID-19 updates. I'd like you to read through that and um, understand a little bit about our decision-making process, what programs are still open and running for as soon as next spring, this upcoming spring, um, decisions we've made about some programs for, for summer uh, 2021, and just general information about how we utilize different resources um, in the field uh, to make informed decisions. We have a back to travel a working group here that's made up of health and safety experts, of course, lawyers, program uh, develop, uh, development crew, um, and several other key stakeholders. Um, again, keeping your health and safety at the forefront of all the decisions. So I would encourage you to take a, a look at that. Um, I'll also say that um, 
uh, we welcome all students on our programs. Um, we take um, that portion of our program quite um, seriously. Every student is welcome. And um, Lily, would you like to address uh, some of this? Because I know this is something that you're really passionate about. And uh, I think you can speak a little bit more eloquently than I can about this. <laughs> this is kind of my passion project at work um, is uh, equity, inclusion, and diversity. Um, so yes, what Dan is saying is very true. We're very intentional about making sure our programs are inclusive for all students. Um, we have quite a handful of resources, especially on our website, that I would encourage you to look at even if you decide to not go abroad with us. Um, our diversity page really outlines some questions that may be pertinent to you as a student from any given identity, whatever it may be, um, things to consider, and blogs and resources from other students who have gone abroad of varying identities or whatever that looks like for them. Um, so we also have uh, Nick Falzone, who is our uh, diversity coordinator, and he kind of is the liaison for any student who has an issue or has a concern before they go abroad. And you're more than welcome to reach out to him directly or meet with him specifically. Again, if you go on the diversity page, his contact information is right there. But that's something we're really intentional about, and we include it in our resources from start to finish. You'll see it woven throughout uh, the teen abroad process. Awesome, Lily. Thank you. Um, we did have another question about um, health sciences programs in Australia and New Zealand. We have many of those. Um, Lily referred to a few of those on our summer program section. Um, there are some of those um, academic or thematic um, uh, programs around um, exercise science, kinesiology, public health. Um, there's also semester-long programs in the more traditional health sciences like um, nursing um, or like you know the courses you would take to be a nurse so you're talking about biology chemistry the organic and inorganic um, cell bio genetics immunology and pathology anatomy and physiology there's so many different options throughout Australia and New Zealand and similar to UCF um, they will have degree areas in nursing, in kinesiology, exercise science, physical therapy. There's a couple of, of um, terms that they use there, but essentially the same core curriculum applies. You have biology and chemistry, and then you have all the other ologies that make up the core curriculum of that academic uh, discipline and uh, degree program. Um, there's some locations um, that, um, will not offer like the more traditional uh, sciences like the International College of Management, just one that comes to mind, but most of the other programs for semester options, including health, including the uh, internships can be done in, in health sciences. Lily, if you wanna just do a, a program search um, while you have the screen up and if the students are still here, they can follow and how you might look for an area of study in say health sciences. For sure. That's it. When this question was brought up, I was like, this is a great time to go to the program finder. So this is our main website. This is where Dan was talking about the COVID-19 updates, health and safety. It's a great website to send to your parents, friends, family, loved ones, whoever is looking out for you and may want some more information on you going abroad. Good place to be. But let's talk about the program finder. So if you go under programs into all programs, this is going to take you to the full list of programs. So it's not going to give you the UCF specific approved ones. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking here. You want to make sure that you're keeping that list in mind. Um, so this is my favorite function on the website. It's very useful. Um, and this allows you to sort by all these different terms. So speaking of health sciences, I'm just going to go into area of study and go into health. And this one's going to search more by college. And this one would search more by subject. So if you're health sciences and you know that you need health science courses, but you also know that you need to take maybe an anatomy class, you can put that in as well, and that'll help you narrow down your options. So then it'll give you kind of a full list of all the different programs available. Again, you'll want to cross-check with what's available at UCF to make sure it's something that's approved, but there's so many options for students that you're going to find something that's from that list. Um, just the two, two other things I want to click into on the website while we're here really quick, unless Dan, you had anything else on this page specifically? Nothing on that page specifically. No. Okay. 
So under how it works, under finance, that's where you're going to find information on our scholarships. That's where you're going to find the entire scholarship application. We also have a FAQ section, which gives a lot of details to students on questions that we get a lot of the time. Um, so definitely, I recommend that students, and nobody ever does this, I know it, but <laughs> take 15 minutes and read through the scholarship page because it'll give you a lot more context for what um, what is required in an application, what the timelines are like, and it'll just prepare you for success. The last thing I want to touch on um, is under how it works, under support, that's where you're going to find health and safety and the diversity and identity resources that I had mentioned earlier, along with Nick Falzone's contact information, um, which is right here, should you have any questions before you apply. Um, so just keep those in mind. And if there's anything else on the website that like you'd like to see, I can definitely navigate you guys to it. Um, no problem. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lily. And um, just to follow up to the academic question around health sciences, um, Lily is working on what we refer to in the industry as a curriculum matching project or a curriculum integration project, some different nomenclature that's used. But it, effectively, what it means is um, we're looking at the degree curriculum at UCF for certain um, areas of study and trying to find um, similar um, and identical where possible, similar and identical subjects overseas that you could then bring back to uh, UCF. Um, obviously, there's a process there. You work through UCF Global. You have to work with your um, advisor in your various uh, department. Um, but this is meant to make a very smooth, um, it's meant to be a very smooth process uh, for you. So um, definitely, um, you know, reach out to your advisor in your department, reach out to the folks in the uh, UCF Global Study Abroad Office. Um, this applies for all academic areas, whether it be psychology or health sciences or or uh, communications or sport and recreation management. Um, we've done a lot of this curriculum matching um, through the years. Um, Lily is just doing a refresher on some of the, um, the, the areas out of business, but I know we've pulled uh, many courses from various disciplines in the past, including psychology and, and um, uh, more traditional sciences, the biology, chemistry, et cetera. Marine biology would be another one, communications courses. Um, and as Lily referenced earlier, um, we're just one email uh, away from a request. So um, you, know, you can reach out to either one of us at any time, a day or two to get back to you, depending on the time of year and the week it is, but um, we're pretty responsive. So we appreciate all the questions today. I appreciate uh, Lily, you being here with me. I uh, appreciate all the students uh, joining in today. This session was recorded. Um, I'm going to be providing this to the um, UCF uh, Global um, uh, contacts there. And um, we will uh, probably get that to them this evening or tomorrow morning. So if you would like to listen to this again, if you would like to send this to friends and some family, uh, or maybe watch it uh, with your family next week when you're home for Thanksgiving, um, then you'll have an opportunity to do so. Um, we just give it another minute here to finish up to see if there was any, any last minute questions coming through. I did uh, see one on scholarships. Yes. Um, so my, I have a very specific scholarship called the Rosewood Scholarship. Do you know how that would apply to all this? If it would apply to all this? So with that, like Dan said, with the other ones, you'll definitely want to check with UCF. The thing with scholarship funds and things like that um, is that we can accept pretty much any kind of scholarship, grant, whatever it may be. It's just a matter of the school restrictions around releasing the funds. So I would go to the UCF Global Office, like Dan mentioned, start there. But the financial aid office should also be able to assist as well. UCF Global is just going to be more familiar with what past students have been able to do, what is like feasible for them, what works towards study abroad, where the financial aid office will be more focused in like finances specifically. Um, so that's one of those where it's like, we're not sure just because we don't facilitate it. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Okay, and then I did see a question about scholarship opportunities. I'm just gonna share my screen really quick one more time, um, take you right to the website. So this is our scholarships page. Um, like we mentioned, this is the teen scholarship information and then there's the, 
these accordions that kind of break down a lot of other options, these external scholarships are not through us at all. So if you decide to go abroad without us, which is fine, we just want you to go abroad in the first place. Um, some of these scholarships could apply to whatever program. So this is a good list to refer to when looking for scholarship opportunities. Um, so that's just a little tip. I'm typing out in, um, just something in the chat that if, um, if people would like to see the um, approved list of programs at UCF, you can send um, Lily uh, and or myself an email. And um, we do have a PDF document. Uh, it's a two-sided document. One is uh, the programs in Australia. The other side is the programs in New Zealand. Um, I'll definitely, we can definitely send that to you uh, by email. It's a small file, so it's, it, it'll go through email, no problem. So if you'd like to see that, great. Um, otherwise, programming um, uh, information is at the uh, studyabroad.ucf.edu uh, website, um, and uh, you'll see all the list of approved programs there. Um, again, thank you all very much um, for being here. Um, we really enjoyed um, speaking with you and presenting and really appreciate all the great questions we had today. And um, I understand this is uh, International Education Week at UCF, and I know they're doing other presentations um, throughout uh, perhaps even this evening, but definitely the rest of the week. Um, Lily and I will be presenting a couple of more times about um, some different programs uh, that we have in partnership with, with UCF. So perhaps we'll see you there. Um, thank you again, everyone. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody.